And Mariah Sapphire. Mariah, hello. <laughs> oh Who are my you gosh. wearing tonight? Hi. Hi. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Tonight, I feel super honored to be wearing Donatella Vercasi. Um, and Donatella made this dress, as we all know. Oh, my, like, husband was supposed to die. But then, like, oh, what a miracle he didn't. So, might as well make good use of the dress. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. it. And what are you excited for, for tonight's awards? Oh, listen, I am first and foremost just so honored to even be nominated. Like, what an incredible thing to happen to me. But I really have to say, like, I feel like maybe I get close to Jack Nicholson. Like, what is happening behind those sunglasses? I have always wondered. Are his eyes open? Are they closed? <laughs> I'm going to find out. <laughs> well, yeah. I've seen his eyes open in movies, and another person whose eyes I've seen open in movies is Jack's fists. Jax, oh. hello. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. Tell me a little bit about um, who you're honoring with your style choices tonight. Um, so I'm, I'm honoring my fellow, you know, my fellow action heroes. They don't get to walk this carpet often enough. I mean, you get one every now and then, Stallone. Uh, maybe a Will Smith, Tom Cruise, but it's it's rare and few between. So right now I am honoring the uh, the original. My you know I got this tuxedo from Jackie Chan's the tuxedo. It was one of the stunt tuxedos, and I'm just it feels it feels amazing to wear. Oh well, you better be careful. But one thing I'm careful to ask is, what are you excited about for tonight's awards? What am I excited? Okay, you know, for a long time, I, I've, you know, I've been excited to see uh, Meryl Streep, you know, I, I notoriously have a little Twitter crush. Uh, you've seen the tweets, you've seen all the tweets. Oh, so you know, I've been flirting back and forth. So it might be, you know, who knows, maybe something happens. Well, we have not, but you have with Meryl. And one person I'd love to flirt with is Chase Alarmington. Chase Alarmington, hello. Hey, thanks uh, so much for chatting with me. I'm so excited to be here tonight uh, representing art and, um, you know, commerce as well. I'm not ashamed to say. Oh, well, you know, that's what tonight's all about. But what I'm curious about is uh, I heard recently you fired your stylist Mm -hmm. and with a new stylist what mm -hmm. inspired that change well you know i'm just a big fan of storytelling and films and the movies and i thought if i'm going to be an actor uh, slash performer slash gymnast slash uh influencer that i should probably like you know walk the walk with what i do and so wearing my fay ray shirt uh, it's it's fay ray from king kong the great film from 100 years ago that people still talk about because it was so revolutionary. And I'm actually using the stylist from that film, who, believe it or not, is still with us at age 113. Oh, wonderful. And one thing I hope to segue into my next question with is what are you excited for for tonight's awards? Honestly, I'm really excited just to like get a break from my shooting schedule because you know I'm, I'm in the middle of shooting this biopic about Brandon Flowers from The Killers. And it's extremely emotional. And, um, you know, as anytime I can get away from just like revealing myself on camera over and over again and 
and you know putting myself on the line is is a, is a good for my performance so you know i don't really care who wins or who doesn't win i'm just happy to have a break well thank you so much chase and thanks everyone as we go now to our main event please give it up for your host kiki razzle Oh, hello, everyone. Oh, my goodness. I'm Kiki Razzle, and I'm just dazzled to be here. I'm tickled and pickled, and fuck, I'm excited. Oh, my goodness. It is Monday night, and it is my favorite night. Yes, that's right, folks. It's And the award goes to your favorite award show that happens on May 10th, 2020, 2020 2021. That's right. Who knows what year it is? <laughs> oh, my goodness, folks you are going to be seeing some of the most favorite films and TV inspirations from this year. That's right, folks, TV, film, all of that. You're going to see it coming to you. And don't be dazzled for those of you who can't quite see behind the thinly veiled curtain here. This is an improvised show. So I am going to be coming to you for suggestions to inspire our amazing actors who happen to be in all of the six nominated best picture films. That's right. All three of them somehow are in most of them. My goodness. Well, you know what, folks? I'm going to get those suggestions. Let's get started, okay? So what I need from you in the chat with your fingers, write it in. I need a villain character. That's right. That you want to learn about more, you know? Like someone like, oh, it could be a cartoon like Cruella, or it could be someone like the Joker, or, you know, uh, Bo Bojack Horseman. Uh, was he the the villain he should have been he sucks okay so you can write those suggestions into the chat and i'm going to keep rolling with another suggestion so write your favorite villains there in the chat and here's the second suggestion that i need from you i need a very silly reason for two people to not get romantically involved like their hairstyles don't match or they use different toothbrushes or one recycles and the other one's a fucking monster so just something like that okay folks put those in the chat now and while you're writing those in the chat the villains and the reason two people to, couldn't be together i'm just gonna let you know that bad dog theater is in fact a charity and if you want to donate to it and get yourself a little charity receipt tax receipt is what they're called then that's what you can do oh i'm so excited to take a look at these villains here oh my goodness okay um <laughs> you know what i'm gonna take for the villains garfield's nemesis normal of course yes a perfect villain that we all need to learn more about some of us might even need to google normal right now just to remind ourselves a bit about normal not saying that's me but uh it might be <laughs> Um, the other suggestion I'm going to go for here is uh, they want to be mother from, they want to, they, I need my glasses for this. They want to be mother from the parent trap me remake. I don't get this one. Um, <laughs> I really want to understand it. Um, let's see. Doesn't love cream puffs. That's the one for me. I think doesn't love cream puffs is going to be the one I'm going to take. So we've got normal from maybe in the chat, who was that, Avery Jean, just remind us who Normal is, uh, because I want to remember, and I just don't, but I love the world of Garfield, so I like Garfield, so I love where you're going. Um, folks, just before we move on here, um, I want to tell you, what do I need to tell you? Um, that, well, there are going to be three different awards tonight that you're going to see. So we're going to see clips from our favorite best picture films, and then we're going to see three different awards. So I need just one more suggestion from you folks before I leave. Of course, Normal is a little gray tabby cat that is really sweet and annoys Garfield all the time. That little gray tabby, of course, Normal. Thank you, Avery Jean Brennan. Wonderful. Um, my next suggestion I need from you, and then it's goodbye for me, is I need, I need a suggestion where is my little thing here? I remember what it is. <clears throat> oh, yes. I need a suggestion of a domestic chore, like laundry. And I need a suggestion of a physical action between two people, like a hug. 
So a domestic chore like laundry and a physical action like a hug. What's a domestic chore? Something that you do in your domus style, in your domesticity, in your domestic. It's a thing. It's a chore in your house. <laughs> It's a chore in your house. What's a physical action like a hug? Oh, I see. I thought Bad Dog Comedy TV was asking me to describe what I meant. Oh, dishes, of course. Yes, dishes. And the next one I see is a secret handshake. Yes, thank you, dishes and a secret handshake. Folks, you know, you might think to yourself, that was a lot of suggestions, but guess what, Toodles? I'm coming back for more because if we know one thing about award show is you get too much of the host. <laughs> All right, folks, I am absolutely delighted to bring you to our first scene. Now, this is an amazing scene and I just want to tell you that this scene is starring Chase Alarmington as a young little kitty, Nermal, a young little tabby cat, Nermal, who for the first time in their life is feeling the pain and hurt that will lead them to being the villain that we know them to be. And the reason they're feeling that pain and that hurt is because their kindergarten teacher isn't very nice to them. And that kindergarten teacher is harshly and severely played by a wonderful Mariah Sapphire. So we bring you to that scene in the classroom where the teacher leans on normal and by the end we see the villain that we know and love to hate today. Normal. Meow. Normal. Meow. Excuse me. You're sitting there with your whiskers all a twitch and your eyes closed, Normal. I was daydreaming, just thinking about what what the world could be. Oh, oh, you were daydreaming. <laughs> What's a tiny little cat like you doing with dreams, Normal? I, I... If I know anything that I do as your teacher, you're not going to amount to much, Nermal. Well, I, I feel like that's a harsh thing to say as a teacher because every little kid has a star in their heart and if they're lifted up and they're carried forward, they can be something and they can and they can be someone. And, and I'm not gonna let you or anyone tell me what, <clears throat> you know, what I can and can't do. So, you know, <laughs> just leave me alone. Normal. <laughs> Let me tell you a little something, okay? When I was your age, when I was but a small, wee little kitten, I too had a sparkle of hope inside. And you know what happened to me, Normal? I what? grew up. And do you know what? We don't have one life, Normal. We don't have two lives. We have nine lives. And none of them ever amount to anything. I've got 17 ex-husbands. I've got 13 children who don't call me anymore. And now my job is to stand in front of you little shits and teach you your ABCs, normal. Yeah. So if you think it's going to turn out how you want it to, you're wrong, pussycat. You're the, you're the meanest southern cat I've ever met. I, I, I don't even have an accent. I don't have any characteristics that can hold me back that are definitive to me. I'm just a little gray cat who dreams big. And, and I, I want to, I want to be strong and I'm not, I'm not feeling very strong right now with, with your, with your coming down on me. It's a bit rude. Don't you think? Like I love everybody and I love you. You're a great teacher, but this is harsh for me. Meow. Oh. Oh, coming in with all the love. <laughs> Normal. You listen to me and you listen to me very clearly. Okay, but there is only one way to get by in this life, and that is conformity. <laughs> no way. I, I'm never going to do what you want. I'm going to do what I want, and I'm going to be the biggest cat meow that's ever gotten in another cat's way. And if, if another other cat looks at me the way you've looked at me, then I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna growl and I'm gonna snarl and I'm gonna get spayed and neutered. I'm gonna get them both so that I can't ever oh. have another kitty and it's just gonna be me and my big dark energy. And this is what you did to me. You did this to me. 
Yeah. Oh, go ahead and pull that little hair over your eyes some more. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. It's better when I can't see both of your eyes. This is a trauma that I will carry with me. Good. Oh, yes. Oh, that that hit me in a deep, deep place, folks. Oh, really, it brought out Chase's vulnerability. And to see Maria, Mariah Sapphire in a role that really, you know, you really want to hate her. And that's something we don't really see from Mariah. So that was fantastic. That is up, of course, for best uh, film of the year. And of course, that is normal the cat's pajamas thank you so much wonderful now before we see our next scene from the nominated best picture films i do need one more suggestion from you folks so in the chat could you please let me know a scandal that a small business might try to cover up like they're slapping their employees or everyone spits so what's a, a small scandal that a, a a business might try to cover up and slap that in the chat? Oh, very exciting. I'm so excited to see your comments here. Let's, are they? Oh yes, finger in the soup. Oh, that is disgusting. Fingers in the soup, anything else? Oh yes, mm-hmm. Ah, yes, you know what? Too many buckets, I think, is um, a really disgusting problem for a lot of businesses. And I think that is the one I'm going to take. Thank you so much. And now we're going to see a clip from another best picture. All right. So let me set this up for you, folks. <clears throat> this is a period drama piece. And, oh, you're going to love it, you know, like... Um, I don't know what time it's from, but it is from a time that is before now. That's for sure. It's period. Now, it's slow. This scene is slow, but somehow the actors are able to captivate us. And it is with Chase Arlington again and, of course, Jax Fists, who's normally in action. So this is a real departure for Jax. Yes, they play star-crossed lovers in this who cannot, cannot be together, of course, because, um, and I wrote this down, so I really should know. <laughs> they, can, they can't be together because um, Jax doesn't like cream puffs. That's right. So in this scene, they're out duck watching, not hunting, duck watching, which was a classic pastime in that time, which is a time before now. It isn't now for sure. And they're out duck watching when Chase breaks the news to Jax that he won't be able to be with him anymore. The tension is grabbable. Let's see that scene. You ever feel like a mallard? Same Z's. Sometimes I feel like I'm just floating, or flying, but with no destination. Oh, there's one. No, just a tree branch swaying in the wind. <laughs> yes. Kind of like what's happening here between us, just swaying in the wind, not really, not really doing anything, are we? What? You, you watching? That's yeah. that's the highlight of my week. It's not what nothing. I told you? It's something, isn't it? It is a little something, but it's like an inconsequential something. You know, you know what the highlight of my week is? What's that? It's not so much the watching the birds. It's who I'm watching them with. You mean your binoculars? Oh, yeah. me, you're talking about me. I'm I get about it. you. Yeah. I'm talking about you. But even with these binoculars, it seems like I can't see you clearly now, can I? Right, but I'm... Is it because my, my accent keeps drifting? You don't yeah, know where I'm from and where I'm going or where I am. Well, let I me tell you, I'm here in the present with you watching these bloody ducks. <laughs> maybe I'd believe that. But maybe you're a spy. It is what? World War II, after all. 
If yes, the year me. is 1943, I'm aware. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. So war's almost done. Maybe, fingers crossed. Maybe. Oh, Could go on forever for all we know. Okay, relax. Yeah. Oh, oh. Look, I don't, I don't think it's appropriate for us to keep duck watching, as it were. As it were. Yeah. You know, my, my father has opened a factory back in, back in that part of England that I'm from. And what part of England? Can you even say a part of England? Is your, is your, hell. Is hell. your, is your cover so bad that you don't even know another part of England? It's cause there's nothing left if we let the bombs keep dropping, isn't it? Bloody hell, I'm from Birmingham. I know you're not, a baker. You're not a baker. Birmingham, it took I'm you quite some time. It took you quite some time. I forgot, And your cream I? puffs are shit. You're not a you baker. Know. You're not a baker. What? You don't like the cream puffs? You said you no. love the cream puffs. No, they taste like the store bought. And honestly, I found what? part of a sticker on that, them. Are you. What you're suggesting to a baker is, a, is as deep as a, a cut can go. That I would buy something from the store and take it out of the package, make sure there were no stickers actually, and put it in a separate bag to give to you. And then to have you, and to say that I would do that and not make them myself from scratch each Sunday is, that's a large claim. You're heated. You've got to, you need to. Calm I am down. heated. You're heated. I'm You're heated. heated. Well, and I'm you know heated what? Too. I can take a cream puff that's full of shit, but I can't take the man that I love being full of shit. Be honest with me. We can run away. To where? It's the world war. It's not, it's not the here war or the, it's everywhere. We can't run away from the bombs and the bullets, can we? No. But I'd rather die out here in this war than continue living in this one right there, right here, right there. We're fighting it on two fronts, aren't we? We should probably be helping with the war effort and not watching these ducks. Wow, that scene gets me every time. Oh god, I just want them to be together and they can't figure it out. Of course, that was from the nominated Best 2021 Picture Film, and that was called You Puff My Cream, starring Chase Arlington and Jack Fists. Oh wow, I'm hoping for that one tonight, my goodness. Oh wow, folks, we're going to do our first award of the night, and I'm so excited. And of course, how I'm going to come to you for another suggestion, folks. So what I need from you is, of course, we know actors being the intelligent, emotional creatures they are. They really like to talk to their fans about subjects that they have no business talking about. Science, medicine, number of things, that's sure, that's true, but they do love talking to them. So, so maybe in the chat, you can drop some issues that our celebs are going to probably talk about during their award speeches tonight because we know they can't just say thank you they got to bring up an issue and you might notice that i'm saying issue in a fun way and that's on purpose because i hope you'll give us a fun issue oh my goodness so what's an issue a celebrity might talk about during their speech and while i'm waiting for your beautiful suggestions to roll in can i just say my goodness, I know acting looks incredible and like magic, but any idiot can do it. And you can do it too, that's right. Go to baddogtheater.ca and check out some classes on improv, sketch, writing, and even acting and meditation. Get there, what are you doing? You can do this. <laughs> All right, let's check in here. <clears throat> All right, we've got, yes, of course. I see one now. Um, uh, all right, our, our actors are going to be looking at your issues and picking what their favorite one is. So now we can go to our first award of the night. I am just so excited, folks, because this is the award that you asked for. It's the award for the best crying while doing the dishes. And the nominees are Chase Arlington, Oh, yes, yep. <laughs> Why do you have to rinse stuff before you put it in the dishwasher? 
Beautiful. And our next nominee is Mariah Sapphire for crying while doing dishes. <laughs> Mr. Clean Mud, I break my heart! <laughs> oh, beautiful work. And the third nominee for crying while doing dishes is Jack's Fist. <laughs> Why? Start. Why? And the award goes to. Mariah Sapphire from Crying While Doing Dishes! Oh my god! Oh. oh my goodness! I can't believe it! I am so grateful to be here. Thank you to my agent and my therapist. Um, but listen, while I'm here, I would really like to use my platform for something good. So, I really want to talk about the lack of condiments on hot dogs okay when you go to a stand downtown new york city or downtown hollywood la wherever you are options are so important okay just two days ago i went and there was ketchup and mustard and there was no relish Relish is a beautiful concoction of a sweet, sweet pickle. And I demand rights for the people who make relish. We relish in relish. Thank you. Yes, we will play our celebrities off. That's right. We will cut those speeches off. Oh, beautiful. And a wonderful issue. So thank you for whoever brought that up. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's that time again, folks. I'm so excited. I just need, uh, you know, a, a couple more suggestions and then we're gonna see two more scenes. I'm very excited. So what I need from you folks is I need you to tell me what uh, an annoying thing might be to happen on a road trip. You're on a road trip and something annoying happens. So tell me about that annoying road trip in the chat. And the second, almost last suggestion i'm gonna get one more from you second suggestion suggestion is um what kind of movie would never have been made in old hollywood that's it what kind of movie would never have been made in old hollywood you can give me a name anything anything from that at all something that would never have been made in old hollywood there you go folks those are our two suggestions for this time and oh man i am absolutely riveted i'm going to get those suggestions later so you can keep them coming in the chat while i introduce our next clip from best nominated best picture 2021 this this is a, a fantastic show. You know, shows like this were like Spotlight and other shows where priests are creepy. But this show is about a journalist, a young journalist played by Jack Fists, who is trying to reveal the scandal of a Dollarama having too many buckets. But of course, his editor wants to hear nothing of it. His editor, played by Maria Sapphire, wants to hear nothing of it. So here they are in uh, Maria's character's office having it out about the Dollarama's too many buckets. I'm telling you, Denise, this isn't right. It's an embezzlement scandal. All, all the buckets, they're priced way over a dollar. It doesn't make sense. Randy, I send you out there to go and get something that the people are going to care about. I send you to go out there and, I don't know, cover some sort of scandal, and you come back to me with Dollarama buckets? Do you know how many Dollaramas there are all over the world? One... It's a ripoff. They're not, it's not. Nothing's actually a dollar. <sighs> second of all, second of all, you gotta, you gotta hear me now. These buckets. Who's buying this many buckets? Nobody. That's the thing. They're, okay, they're, Randy, they're pretending look. to sell these buckets. Right. Okay. I'm, okay. I see what's going on here. You're upset because I got a promotion and you didn't. So now you're coming in here with this like crock of a story to what to make me look bad in my first week. Make you look bad. I, I got you a cake. 
I got you a cake. I'm, I'm happy. You, you're the best editor. You're the best editor. And sure, I was sour. I was a little sour. But now I get to do what I love. And I am telling you, this is the story of a century. You're now, telling me the, the story of a century. What, what are you going to... Is it a Dear Eliza song? The hole in the yes. bucket has been done, Randy. They said you'd say that. They said you were part of it. I guess I didn't want to believe it. I guess I, I thought you had some integrity. Randy, come on, okay? Look, What's you know I'm one of the good chair? guys. Okay, What's listen. What's behind your chair? What's behind your chair? Randy, Denise? don't cry. It's... Don't make me, don't make me move the chair. Just tell me what's behind the chair. I it's not a it bucket, it's a, it's a trash bucket. That's different than a Dollarama bucket. It's, it's a trash can, Denise. We use a trash can. <laughs> it's the same brand and everything. Your father Randy. owns a plastics company. And I know he's been trying to offload the plastic. Randy, look, okay, I'll level with you. No, listen to me, okay? You have to listen to me. Listen, I know we had that one night, and then we never talked about it again, but it really meant a lot to me, so just listen to me when I am telling you you don't want to mess with the bucket people. This is not a story you want to chase, Randy. I don't have your love. You said you didn't want to be with me. That night meant everything to me. And if I got to chase the bucket, I'll chase the bucket. No, Randy, no, because when you chase, chase the bucket, you're going to kick the bucket, the and I bucket. love you, Randy. I'd rather Please. kick the bucket than live a lie. I see. I see how it is. So it means nothing to you that we could just let the buckets go and carry on as we are. I'm sorry. I don't know how much more time you have if you're going to stick with this. You might want to make part of Randy, the pun. Look, a we don't list. do Randy, not everything Yeah, okay, so there's there's a lot of bad shit that happens with the buckets, but that's not all this place is. I mean, we can do quality articles. We can help change the world and You told and me. And we can you do it together. Me. On our Please, first Randy. day, lying in bed. Lying in bed, you said integrity. That's what matters most. I did. Is that still true? It is. Did and then you I know? put my chest. I put my ear on your chest and I listened to your heartbeat. And I swore yeah. that I would never do anything to hurt that heart, Randy, which is why I'm asking you right now. Please don't do this. I don't want to hear that heart in your chest go silent. Don't chase the buckets, Randy. Sometimes. Sometimes when you leave a bucket long enough. No, I've already said too much. It overfills. And that's what you've done to me. You fill me up. And now I gotta do... I gotta spill the beans. I gotta spill... Spill this story. Well, if you're gonna go, then go. But I'm not gonna stop it, Randy. I can't save you. You're making your own choices. You don't have to worry about saving me. You gotta save yourself. Oh my God. And did you know at home that that was based on a true story out of Elbow, Saskatchewan? That's right. That's right, it is. Yes, the character Chase, uh, sorry, Jax was playing was just a young man trying to make it in the elbow newspaper. My goodness. And of course, that movie was called Chase the Bucket. Thank you so much. What a wonderful clip. We're going to move right along to our ne next clip from our other nominated film for Best Picture. Very excited about this one. This one is another slow, melancholy, really kind of a mood and a vibe film that everyone's loving this time of year, that's right. It's about a road trip across Canada with two uh, relatively bankrupt cyclists, that's right. And uh, they're on the side of the road taking a break from the cycles and they're chatting about what every cyclist chats about on the heavy road across Canada, mosquitoes. And this clip features Chase Arlington 
who is uh, a, a cyclist who cycled back across Canada a million times, and Maria Sapphire as a young, uh, upbeat cyclist who has yet to be crushed by the darkness of the world. Oh, it's fun. Here we go. <laughs> Sure, we're freaking giving her back there, eh? <laughs> I guess. Oh, yeah, man. The way your uh, little legs there were pumping along and you're just burning freaking rubber. <laughs> we're we're basically to Saskatchewan. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm just afraid of Winnipeg, you know? There's nothing oh. like Winnipeg when it comes to mosquitoes. Oh, frick. Oh, no. Uh, I never heard anybody say anything about the peg. You know, all I remember is that, like, uh, Canadian Heritage Minute or whatever. You know, Winnie the Pooh. You know what? You want to know something about Winnipeg? It's a swamp. It's in a swamp. It's literally a swamp. So the mosquitoes oh. are pretty crazy. Oh, shucks. Thought, yeah, bud. You thought BC had mosquitoes. You thought Saskatchewan has mosquitoes. All I'm saying is... Just wait for Winnipeg. Well, our, sh our shucks, okay? Well, oh, frick. Okay, oh, God, here, I know what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go get some citronella. Oh, some off skin tastic. Oh, 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 I can't even believe I didn't even think about this till now. Yo, listen to me. We just gotta pedal our bikes so freaking fast, bud. We just gotta give her takes that we just fly right through Winnipeg faster than the freaking mosquitoes. Off Skintastic? That's cute. <laughs> no, I use my own homemade brew. It's uh, one part whiskey, uh, one part Windex, and three parts Whoa. my own sweat. Whoa. You mix that together, and mosquitoes are just they are going to steer clear of you. Well, yeah, I'm into but your plan, I didn't Luther, want to but... say, though. I didn't want to say, but isn't that why you cover up? part of your face though you know because you made this homemade concoction and then you tried to light a cigarette and i mean that's legend man <laughs> that, that story's legend is you that know? what they tell you <laughs> they tell you it was the cigarette they tell you i don't have my yeah. eye anymore well uh, yeah <laughs> yeah that, that's uh, what they say <laughs> well they're freaking right ah! whoa 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 bud whoa that's a hole in your skull Whoa, man, I feel like I could yeah. see your thoughts there for a second. Whoa. I call it the mosquito catcher. So Get it? They... Because it's a big hole. Oh. And all the mosquitoes fly in there. Wait. Wait a what? minute. So you pour your concoction into your mosquito hole, and they all go into the hole, and then you save the rest of us? Some curses are actually blessings in disguise. Oh. That's how I won. That's how I won all these races all these years was my mosquito hole filled with my own concoction, sucking up the mosquitoes away from the rest of my itchy parts. You know what I mean? Yeah, whoa. Man. Rookie, you got a bright future. I could see that. Yeah, when do I get my own mosquito hole? You don't want a mosquito hole. Don't you get what? it? I lost my what? eye. I have one friggin' eye. Yeah, but you get to see so much more, you know? Because, like, you're this respected cyclist, you know? Like, so, yeah, you're like a cyclops, you know? You got one eye, but you're like a cyclops cyclist, you know? You get to go places, man. People respect you. It's my first new... bike ride. You've been on what? How many bike rides now? 17,000 bike rides. Yeah. But you know what? You ha you're, you're, you're as strong as any rider I've ever met. You're literally in the middle of a competition and you said this is the first time you've ever you ever did a bike ride. So I would say that's a pretty solid start that you're competing with me, the cyclopsist. Well, yeah, you, sometimes it's like, well, listen, I write about you in the magazines, you know, and you're all about the destination and I'm all about what I'm getting away from. So, huh. yeah, which is, which is your job, and yeah. your life and your family and religion and politics it's just yeah. you and the rubber and the the tingling burning sensation that the windex causes in your mosquito hole oh man 
that must be the, you know, I was thinking to myself, whoa, this guy's so fast, but now it just dawned on me, that must be the wind whistling through your mosquito hole. Yeah, it, it flows really hard and shoots out of my ear, which has caused several surgeries to take place, but it is pretty poetic, and you know what? I get lost. Yeah, well... I lose myself. It's like a wind chime. <laughs> Wow, beautiful. Really sets a vibe. It makes you want to cycle across Canada. And of course, that was a clip from Mosquito Hole, uh, something that I will think about and have nightmares about for the rest of my life. And I know you at home are feeling the same. Okay, folks, we're about to get our second award, but let me just get one last suggestion from you folks. And this is a reason humanity ended. Slap that in the chat. It's not zombies. It's not COVID-19 because we're trying to escape in a fictional reality. So please don't put that in the chat because that's too real. <laughs> so a fun reason humanity ended in the chat, please, to inspire our last best nominated picture. Oh, goodness. I've had so much champagne back there with Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt and other Scientologists. And I am now a Scientologist and watch out for me later. Oh my goodness, let's get to this next award, folks. Very excited because this is an award that you folks wanted. And of course, uh, it's the award for best playing of a mime saxophone while attempting a secret handshake. That's right. Up uh, first nominated for this is Jack's Fists. Very good. He, uh, he, he said, no stunt double for me. I got all my own stunts. Okay, next up, trying the mime saxophone playing while doing a secret handshake is Chase, our alarming Jim. Big crop shot. We love this film. And of course, our last nominee for playing a mime saxophone while doing a secret handshake is Mariah Sapphire. Oh yeah, great embouchure. Oh boy. And those were our nominees. And the winner is Jack's fists for playing a mind saxophone while doing a secret handshake. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to uh, thank the Academy. And I'd also love to uh, say that this award truly goes to Mariah and Chase. Watching you, I was inspired all these years, but uh, I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to talk about something that is near and dear to our hearts and honestly near and dear -er to our stomachs. Uh, the smell of a belly button. Now, this resonates with me because it is the birthplace of all life from the time that we are in utero to the time we die. We have this. It feeds us. It is with us. Um, it is not respected. It needs to be respected. Now, we wash away the very life force that remains with us uh, because of societal norms saying that we must be clean, we must be cleansed, uh, we have to have a certain smell. But this is something that fed us. This is our very nutrients. I know for myself, I still, every day, take a little piece of my meal, put it there to just remember where it all started. And so we need to take that this time to remember that we don't need to destroy, uh, sorry, I'm getting emotional, uh, to destroy that, to clean it out. I, I know some, some of my friends in Hollywood, they'll use a Q-tip to get in there. And honestly, no, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't cut me out. Wow. 
Wow, Jax. Okay, thank you, Jax Fists, and congratulations. <laughs> All right, folks, let's roll right through to our fifth nominated Best Picture Film for 2021. I'm so excited about this one. Oh, Jack's uh, Fist is actually in this film. Now, this is a this is a film in the old uh, glory days of Hollywood, you know, when, when people talk with that transatlantic accent that sounds bizarre. <laughs> um, so it's from that time of Hollywood. And uh, of course, in this film, uh, 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 Jax is a star in Hollywood, the likes of James Dean, Marlon Brando, of course, and 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 Chase is a young writer who's who's pitching this idea for a film that he really really loves, and of course that film has the exact same plot line as Fifty Shades of Grey, and uh, they're sitting in a coffee shop while um, Chase uh, pitches this film to to Jax. Let's see that now. Wow, I can't believe I'm sitting here with you. <laughs> this is a big, big moment for a guy like me, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. It's good to hear, good to hear. I mean, opportunity is around every corner on these streets. And the, the way you walk around these streets, everybody looks at you like you're some kind of god, like you're some kind of, some kind of, some, 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 some from the clouds. <laughs> oh, get it's out really of here, amazing. get out of town. It's really something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, they tell me you have a picture. Yeah, I, I gotta got get the next big picture for you, and I really, I really think it's a hit, and I think I think you're gonna be pleased with what you hear. It's it's, it's gonna be a big film. Well, lay it <laughs> on me. Okay, so so you know this this comes from a, a lot of personal experience, so there's a heart to it, and and it's also you know, you know it's 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 an issue of the time. It's it's what people are talking about. Uh, you know, first we got we got Eisenhower, we got <laughs> you know oh, we got don't get we me got, started on Eisenhower. Right, you know, and we got, uh, you know, we got, we got potential. Uh, we're in between two world wars. This is a harsh time, you know. Mm. <laughs> so I want to, I want to talk about what everybody's talking about in their home, which is, which is BDSM. Do you boys want to? Oh, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we're talking about a film, not about our own personal <laughs> lives. <laughs> oh, I don't care, Mister. I've heard crazier things. Do you boys want a milkshake? Um. Only if you actually mean what you mean, and you're not talking about BDSM as well. <laughs> oh, I don't know what those letters stand for. <laughs> well, that's for the best. I'll take a latte. A latte? I don't know what that is, but I'll bring you some milk. And for you? Yeah, I'll take a, I'll take one of those, uh, just a strawberry milkshake, okay? Okay, oh, sweetheart. Classic. Oh, get out of here. Did you see? Did you see she, the way isn't that? she a darling? That, that bird really looked up to you. Let me tell you. And she'd look, she would look up to you more if you appeared in my next picture. Now, let me, let me take you to, to this. There's, there's this scene. It's about a girl. She's a real, she's a real sweetie. She's a star, you know, and, and she's, she's up and coming in the business world. And she decides to, uh, to uh, take a job with, with, a, with, a, with a boss, which would, be, of course, be played by your majesty here. <laughs> you would be the oh. boss, and, and you're a good boss. You're a great boss. You're a boss that everybody wants to work for. That's for sure. Now that's what I like to hear. That's what I love to hear. Yeah, it's a very likable character. It's, every, it's something that everybody loves. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, obviously you're working together all the time, going through work. And, you know, there's there's a heat that occurs. There's a spark. There's a sort of attraction. Like yeah, every great it, picture, like there's a, a love fire. story. It's a fire. There's a fire. I'm a fireman. I'm, no, no, I'm, no, how's it gonna... the, I'm the chief of uh, the fire. The fire That's hall. right. That's right. And how's it going to be addressed? Unclear. But one thing's for sure. This lady wants to get spanked. So you and her. You get you mm -hmm. get together and you know and and just you, you spank this. No, woman. there's a lot of spanking pictures going on uh, right now at this time. I know. You see everyone. Okay, you see Cary Grant spanking. You, I you, know. you see Marlon spanking. You see a lot of spanking. Even Chaplin spanking. How do how does my spanking picture stand up to the rest? Well, because we don't stop at spanking, we go a little bit further. Let me tell you, there's something. Uh, there's Ooh. something. Uh, how familiar are you with nipple clamps? No, I'm not. Hello, dears. I was yeah. wondering if you would like to give some money for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I'll tell you, I'll give you all the money in the world if I can just sign a picture deal with this guy. You know who this is? Ooh. You know? Ooh. Ooh, you you're that fancy shiny man from the television. Oh, sorry, dears. I thought you said fickle clippers, and I was like, ooh, fickle, fickle clippers. clippers. 
Yeah. I'm sure they'd like to learn about the word of our Lord. A little, little, little bit further right down the line than that, ma'am. <laughs> I'm well, not sure you... you'd like our picture. <laughs> oh, well, you two silly boys have a great day. Uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't escape me that you just said our picture. Wow, I'm... Oh, I'm, uh, I'm well, yeah, listen, you, you, you were talking, talking about n uh, nipple clamps, was it? Nipple clamps. Clamps ah. for your nipples. They're just like clamps that you would use to make a woodworking project and come to fruition. But instead, now I hear Howard Hughes has a nipple. Howard Hughes has a nipple clamp movie. No. Now I, I I don't want to do just any nipple clamp movie. It's it's got to be something good. It's got to be something worthy of my face and my time. Okay. okay. Well, you you know you're you're not letting me get to the finish line here. So you got the spanking. You got the nipple clamps. And and then you know what else you have is is an exchange of submissiveness and domination. That's what everybody's talking about now. Who's in charge and who's the one who's not in charge? You know, so okay. this picture is going to explore. It's, a, it's just going to be like Citizen Kane. It's going to be like a, an exploration. That movie's a BDSM movie most people don't realize. Orson Welles knew exactly what he was doing with Citizen Kane. Hence the well, uh, Rosebud reference. Of course, our film's going to be a little bit uh, more uh, uh, down the line than that. But let me tell you, there's good, some people are going to be in charge at some point. That's going to be you. And then sometimes there's going to be someone who's not in charge. It's going to be the, the, the bird. And she's going to be really into it because that's her choice. And it's all, all about right. that these days. Don't you understand? Have you seen these bob haircuts? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know if you noticed, but I did have a short cameo in that movie. <laughs> now, I don't normally act anymore. I'm too busy just dancing on my daytime talk show, but I did have a short cameo in that movie, and what a laugh I had. I had to wear diapers. I was so nervous acting with those giants of the form. My goodness. And, of course, that was a clip from The Rosebud Reference, a film that is near and dear to my heart. Oh, my goodness. We are at our last clip from our best nominated picture, folks. This is going to be a shorter clip because time is running out on the clock. So a short clip from this movie, I'm very excited about it. This is one of those sci-fi movies off in the future, you know, on another planet. A mother takes care of a son, the mother beautifully played by Maria Sapphire and the young boy played by a, a, a Jax Fist. And of course, uh, there is a cameo by Chase Arlington later in the scene, not too late because of, as I reminded you, we have so much time left in the show. But in the scene, Mariah's character reveals to her child that she is indeed a, ro a robot and he is the last of humanity because humanity ended because the dolphins took over the planet. And she has to tell this news to her young boy. Let's see that scene on that far off planet now. Stetson? Uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, Stetson Rebecca. Yes. Why are you crying? I didn't know you were around. Um, today at school. A dolphin, well, a group of dolphins, they hit me with their nose. My body's oh. all battered and bruised. Oh, And they dear. called me names. They called me Landwalker. What land kind walker, of names? Two feet. Um, they, they said, oh, where's your porpoise hole? Is You got that big one with teeth. And they said, what else did they say? They said, oh, nice fin. Finless. It didn't it wasn't that they're, they're not great at them. They're not you know, for such yeah. a smart animal, they're not great at these, but it still hurt because I knew the context in which it was <laughs> Oh 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 honey listen, okay? You have something that is so special deep inside. And those dolphins, okay, yeah, sure. They may make fun of you because you're walking around with all of your phalanges waving to and fro. But you have something that they will never have. What's that? Is you it... are the last of something great. Dinner is ready. Dinner has been prepared. <sighs> I will now move on to cleaning the house. If I may interrupt, would you like me to murder these dolphins? Mom, would that be okay? 
Can uh, I let our robot, our silly robot, kill all the dolphins? Well. I will be most brutal. I mean, I mom. was going to wait until your 18th birthday. How dare guess... they insult you for having teeth? They have teeth as well. Oh, it were that I would have teeth. Well, why not? Listen. Really? There's something you need to know before this robot unleashes mass destruction on these dolphins who were so horrendous to you at school. Yeah, well, I'm ready to hear anything. I mean, dolphins are awful. Almost okay. as bad as robots. But listen, we need to save to just me? one dolphin. You need to save just one dolphin. And you need to mate with that dolphin because you are the last of your kind. What kind? What do you mean? I, I, I'm, I can't really cry, son. Because well, you're not you really about? my son. What? You are no. my son. You are a robot as well. What? <laughs> Uh, ah, sure, yes. Um, <laughs> you can get out of here, Jax. <laughs> I bet you're wondering yourself now, now there seem to be a, a few plot holes in that movie, and you're right. And that's not why it was nominated. It was nominated because it had a lot of wealthy backers. And so that's how the world works. And if I'm the first one to tell you it, then it's your lucky day, kid. Spank your bottom. You're born. <laughs> oh, Hollywood. Oh boy, oh my goodness, we've come to the end of our show where we are going to do the award for the best picture and we've seen some amazing movies, of course. I'll go through our six films that were up there. Of course, what you just saw, which was, um, well, I didn't come up with a fancy title for it. Um, it was called Fins and Jabs. Yes, that's what I'll call it, Fins and Jabs, of course. Um, and of course, there was Mosquito Hole chase the bucket you puff my cream normal the cat's pajamas and the rosebud reference and because hollywood is obsessed with itself the winner is the rosebud reference starring chase alarmington come up here chase congratulations <laughs> um Wow, thank you so much. Um, I can't believe I just fell on the stairs coming up to the podium. That's so like, you dream of this moment for your whole life and then and then you're walking up and you trip on some, Like I, I walk on stairs every day, every single day. I do three steps, you know, at a minimum, just entering a building. And sometimes I'll go up a full, a full flight of stairs and there's no problem. So then for tonight to, to come here and, and then I win a major award, like best picture for the Rosebud reference, which is wonderful. And then I just fall down some stairs. I feel like if, I feel like an idiot, you know, I feel like a stupid idiot. And I should, should have never worn these wide legged pants, uh, Harry Styles, you know he's very cool, and I like him. He's a he's a close friend. Obviously, we're starring together in this Killers uh, doc, where I play Brandon Flowers, and he's a wonderful actor and a good guy. But he convinced me to wear these wide-legged pants, and you know here I here I am in the biggest moment of my life, and I haven't even thanked a single person yet, not anyone involved with the film or my mother or God or anything. I just all I can picture is that that one split second where I tripped on the stairs. It's just a couple of steps. I sh I could have leapt. The, all the steps at once <laughs> would have been the best way to do it. But instead I took each step and I'm wearing these wide leg pants and I stepped on the front of the wide leg pants and I, and I fell. At least that's how it is in my memory. It's exaggerated. I guess in reality, I could have stepped on the back of the pants. They're just so, so wide legged. And um, thank you to my mother. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Oh, we have come to the end of the night. What an exciting night. I want to thank you all at home for your amazing suggestions. That has been the first, and the award goes to here at Bad Dog Theater Comedy. And let's reveal the people behind the curtains. First of all, I want to make a big round of applause for Connor Lowe, a wonderful technician, bringing in that amazing, juicy music. Yum, yum, yum. So go wild for him in the chat. Oh my goodness, of course, I've been Kirsten Rasmussen or Kiki Razzle. That's me, your host. I'm going to be hosting all the time, so watch out. It's going to be slick. <laughs> oh, amazing. And and sorry if you folks at home thought that you would maybe have a chance at voting for your favorite movie, but 
No, just like the Academy Awards, we don't care what you liked best. Just kidding, we love you and we care about you so much. Um, let's bring up our amazing actors and uh, and learn their real names. It's Andrew Bushel, everybody. Hello. Andrew, it's where Andrew can the Bushel. people see you? Uh, they can see me on Bad Dog TV anytime they like. Please, please tune in to Bad Dog TV. Oh my goodness. And he's also on a bunch of TV, TV shows, but he's being <laughs> modest. <laughs> All right, folks, let's bring up the amazing Jill Welsh. Oh, hey! Hello, Jill hey. Welsh, what are you up to? Where can people find you and see you? Oh, tomorrow night on Bad Dog TV, I'm starting a storytelling show, oh, which should be loads of fun. Uh, yeah, we've got uh, Faisal Butt. Uh, we also have Nick McKinley from The Fast Romantics doing like a musical guest. I mean, come on, check it out. It'll be fun. Yeah, 9 o'clock tomorrow. Here, Bad Dog yeah. TV. That's right, so hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification for when Jill's show is starting. Thank you so much, Jill. Thank and our special you. guest tonight was Miguel Rivas from the fame of the Beaver Turn. Welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. That was really fun. I hope um, I remembered enough plot points from Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, it was brilliant. Uh, where can people find you these days, Miguel, if they're hungry for more of your work? You know what? Everyone should listen to the Tony Ho podcast on CBC Podcasts. There's season one and two available, and we're in the middle, I can announce it now, of making season three, which will come out soon. <laughs> check it out, CBC Podcasts, Tony Ho. Amazing. Thank you, Miguel. Please do check that out on CBC. And check this out. Come back next week. There's going to be new guests. There's going to be more cast members. There's going to be new stuff inspired by your suggestions every night. And if you want to donate, if you enjoyed this, donate to BadDogTheater.com. Making a family, uh, making a home for us improvisers, even during this crazy wild time. And the more you donate, the more we are able to keep doing this and keep comedy alive, even while we're stuck in our own homes doing it. Thank you so much and have a great night.